Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and obviously there's been a lot of drama recently revolving around, well, Creative Assembly and Sega. We saw the cancellation of Hyenas, something that, uh, well, you know, was going to happen eventually. But also the cancellation of other projects which we don't know anything about. As some of you may or may not be aware, Creative Assembly have been branching out a lot recently and buying out a lot of other studios. They've got a bunch of projects that were in the works and in this video I want to talk about the rumored titles that were in the works and yeah, let's see which one may or may not have been cut. I've been hearing a lot about these potential different titles from various different sources and it hasn't been just recently, it's been for more than a year and I haven't really covered it barring the Total War Warhammer 40k thing, mostly because, well, we don't know if it's actually true or not. What I will say though is a lot of these rumors I do actually believe. You can take this as a source trust me bro or whatever you want, but I do have reason to believe that everything that I've been hearing does make a lot of sense and I know I'm not the only creator who's been talking about the possible titles and sadly now possible dead titles which will be mentioned in this video. Alright, we'll start off strong with Total War Warhammer 40k. A lot of people have been expecting this, a lot of people are saying it's not going to work, but yeah, it's likely going to happen guys. Many people have been speculating about this for around two years now, I've been hearing rumors for around two years, especially as Creative Assembly had been hiring more and more people that were XGW that worked in the 40k franchise. I'm not the only creator within the Total War sphere that has been thinking about this and even saying that they've been hearing rumors lately, and it's also the case that Chapter Master Valrek, a big 40k YouTuber, has been hearing a lot of stuff lately too. And keep in mind that he has a lot of insiders, which is why a lot of his leaks end up being true. It's not because their tinfoil hats and stuff, it's literally because someone is outright telling him. Realistically, I firmly believe that Total War Warhammer 40k has been in a concept stage for the past two years now, and we're likely going to see this in 2027. It's because it's going to take a while to adapt the Total War stuff to more 40k style gameplay. But when it comes to like single entity tanks, uh, gunplay and so on, I mean we've got that in Warhammer Fantasy, you know the Skaven, uh, the Vampire Coast, all that type of stuff, it's already in game, it just needs to be adapted a little bit further. Again, I know a lot of people are saying it's not going to work, and I understand that you think it's not going to work. It's still going to happen anyway. 2027 is the date that I see it coming out, or at least getting announced, because that's the anniversary of Warhammer 40,000. It kind of lines up with a statement that Rich Aldridge gave a few weeks ago, months ago at this point, where the Total War Warhammer 3 lifespan only is for about three to four years. What comes after? Well, they'd have to do another big title, and it makes sense to do 40k. This is keeping the fantasy section alive. Yes, I know it's sci-fi, but it would count as a fantasy development, I guess. And you have to keep in mind that once the next big thing comes out, usually the older title gets ignored. So yes, this is where Warhammer 3 dies. You know, unless Creative Assembly make another god-awful mistake and ends up killing their own company. Now a lot of people would be saying, well, wouldn't there be some sort of soft announcement like what happened in 2012 regarding Total War Warhammer, as there was a very, very soft announcement there just saying that a license agreement was done? Yes and no. You see, it doesn't have to happen because a license agreement is already there. Sure, it's just for Warhammer Fantasy, but that can actually be updated without public knowledge. So the question is, is this possible title dead? No, this is going to make so much freaking money you have no idea. Like, the Total War Warhammer franchise has already made a buttload, right? 40k would make double, triple the money, especially if the rumors are true that this is going to be another trilogy, as, yeah, they want to milk this as much as possible. We're going to be coming back to the trilogy situation a little bit later, trust me, because there are other games that I feel, and I've heard little rumors that are going to be kind of treated as such. Okay, we're going to go to the historical section. A lot of people have been waiting for the next big historical. It's been a while, let's be honest though. And I've actually heard about two possible titles, which may or may not be linked in the form of a trilogy, I don't know. Or they're shopping for ideas for two possible separate titles. Now this could be Empire 2 or World War 1. We've all seen a little bit of rumors here and there, and both of them kind of make sense. They would probably want to go to a bit more modern stuff with World War 1. Obviously not true modern, because, you know... It's been a while. Or Empire 2 and get a big full world situation, like a world map. I know I'm not the only person speculating about this. I know Cody Bonds has been speculating too and a few others. And it just kind of makes sense as, yeah, it would be gunpowder play. 
a lot of people would see it as get a World War One game or an Empire 2, have that kind of link up to 40k. As well, and not exactly the same, if Empire 2 comes out first, then the system can be then expanded upon to make a 40k game. We've been seeing this a lot with the Warhammer and other Total War games, where one system kind of improves the other. Let's be honest, a lot of stuff that was introduced in Troy, for example, has been serving Warhammer really well. I know a lot of people have been saying that they'll prefer Medieval Free Temple. 2, it's usually quite conflicted among the fan base, and personally I would prefer Medieval 2, but I don't think that that's coming anytime soon. I think it'll come one day, but I haven't been hearing anything about it. No rumors, no chatter, no nothing. Uh, it's a bit weird, but I guess it's because it's not high on the priority list at the moment. However, that could easily change considering that Hyenas is now dead and a few other titles are too. They could decide to keep as many devs as they can and start working on other titles. Remember, Creative Assembly do have this rather bad habit about releasing a game a year. Funny enough, we were supposed to get two games this year because Hyenas and Pharaoh. And uh, yeah, I'm not keen on that. This is why I think that... A lot of the staff members should not be fired, but instead be moved to different projects. Because Creative Assembly's stupid idea about releasing a game every single year usually leads to the game being pretty broken at release. It happens so often, it's just kind of ridiculous that people keep standing for it. And no, I'm not just referring to the fiasco of Warhammer 3. Remember, Attila, Rome 2, a lot of Total War games release in a bad state at launch. But yeah, has the possible Empire 2 slash World War 1 game been slashed? I very much doubt it. They need another true historical. And what better way to get something so massive than, again, Empire 2 or World War 1? Something that can encompass the full world and they can easily milk it, right? £60 per game, because we know the prices are going up. So in total, you would have to pay... £180 for the full experience. Again, not very keen on this. It made sense for Warhammer due to all the different races, but it's something that Creative Assembly would likely do. They know that there's money here, and then all the different DLCs, you'd easily be spending, say, what? £500, maybe even more, on the whole series. This is why I kind of lean towards the World War One situation more than anything else. Or else it'd have to be Empire 2, Empire 2.2, and then Empire 2.3. Alright, so now we're going to move on to something very, very different. You know that Creative Assembly do branch out every now and then, and one of them that I've been hearing about is a RPG game, which may or may not be Warhammer-based. Yes, I'm hearing RPGs in the style kind of like Oblivion, Skyrim, and so on. So not a real true RPG, but open world type of situation, right? Interestingly enough, I have reason to believe that this is a Warhammer Fantasy title, as a lot of people have been kind of hearing that too, Cody Bonds also. And um, interestingly enough, every now and then I do mention the want for a Warhammer RPG game, and a member of Creative Assembly from one of the studios, I'm not going to say which one, who doesn't follow me by the way, so is actively looking for interest on Twitter for that type of stuff, always engages by liking said post. It's very, very interesting, because uh, this is someone fairly high up in that studio's ranks as far as I'm aware, and someone that I really don't have communication with. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, unless they've got ghost accounts, but... No, no communication. Again, won't mention the person or the studio as that might potentially get someone in trouble and I don't want to do that, but yeah, it does make me believe that. Especially since Warhammer Fantasy is coming back in the form of Warhammer the Old World, and I have been hearing very good rumors that there are multiple Warhammer the Old World titles in the works through various different studios, not just affiliated with Creative Assembly or Sega. I'll be honest with you, as much as I would love a Skyrim-esque or even Baldur's Gate style RPG game, I really don't think that this should be part of Creative Assembly Studios, as they've got no history doing that type of series. I mean, there's Spartan Total Warrior and so on, but even then, that was more linear than open world. So it's very likely that if this game did exist in one way, shape, or form prior, it's also dead. Especially since Sega's post on Sega Sammy kind of alludes to killing off projects which aren't really a Total War game to make sure that they work on the format that works. You never know, this could still be going on, but I very much doubt it. And seriously, if there's going to be like a RPG-style game, Larian or Owlcat, if there's going to be a Skyrim-style game, well, anyone that does those types of titles, not Creative Assembly, please. I know that Games Workshop staff do listen to my videos, I know fairly high up people listen to my videos. Guys... 
send it to a dev studio that's known to make these types of titles. We also know that there's a game being created on Unreal Engine. Now, this or may not be the role-playing game. Some people have heard that it is. Some people, like myself, have heard rumors stating otherwise, and this might actually be another game. Hell, I even heard a rumor that they were going to do another Spartan Total Warrior type game, which... I don't know if people actually want, right? Like, for the memes, maybe, but it wouldn't really be a big seller. Regardless, a title like this is probably dead, considering that, again, it doesn't really have that much promise. You can put the Total War name on it, but it's not really going to sell, is it? It's one of these things where Creative Assembly are likely branching out to as many titles as possible because they got cocky. This is what happens when a company gets really, really large and starts seeing a lot more wealth than they're normally used to. It's also possibly the case that Sega are pulling the strings here, as while a lot of people are saying that Sega don't have much control, I very much doubt that, considering that Sega has killed off a few unnamed projects and hyenas. They clearly have a lot more to do with Creative Assembly than what Creative Assembly normally say, as CA go on record saying that, oh, no, way, we act independently. It's like, well, I don't think so, my dude. All right, next. Well, there's obviously going to be another Total War game by CA Sophia. After Pharaoh is out, they're probably going to move directly to the next one, leaving a small DLC team. This is the usual situation, so concept art is probably already done. There have been some rumors, I believe Cody Bonds was going on to it, about a Total War Babylon, another small-scale Bronze Age game, which will link up to Troy and Pharaoh, as there have been rumors popping around everywhere that Pharaoh and Troy are going to be together. If you actually play Pharaoh during the open weekend, you can actually find a Greek faction from the whole Troy situation. So assets are being reused and yeah, I mean, it's entirely possible that a Immortal Empire situation will happen and maybe this Total War Babylon could be an expansion pack with a map expansion as that is completely possible. But we do know that CA Sophia have been working on smaller style Total War games. Not necessarily saying that Pharaoh is bad, it's just the fact that it is smaller scale and it doesn't really take that much to notice that it's smaller scale. Now, I wouldn't say that this would be cancelled, I really doubt it because it's one of these things that keep the one game a year thing going. So. Maybe it's this, maybe it's something completely different. Honestly, were it up to me, I would put CA Sophia under a bigger name, a bigger title. They're a development studio that is actually very, very good, and it's a shame that they're working on smaller scale Total War titles. It kind of feels like their talents aren't being used to their best of their potential. Now, the last thing, which I am not too sure how this is going to fall. I've heard that they want to expand the relationship with the Warhammer Fantasy setting as Warhammer the Old World is coming up. This could explain why Creative Assembly said no more Old World stuff in Total War Warhammer 3, because I've been hearing a very odd rumor very, very odd one, which is a Warhammer, Total War Warhammer, The Old World. The thing is, I've been hearing loads of conflicting things, so I'm not sure if any of them are legit. It sounds like it could be, because it does sound like something that Creative Assembly would do. One is, this could be a standalone thing, a Fall of the Samurai situation, where it's the exact same map, just with a bunch of new factions, reusing some, well, the grand majority of the assets from before, as... Yeah, some things would have changed, mostly characters and maybe a few countries like Kislev being a little bit larger. But the map would be the same, the units would be the same, and the factions would be the same. So it's not completely out of the question. And what kind of worries me here is obviously that would be them charging another £60 for uh, the same game a fourth time. Well, literally, it would be the Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires map just... Again, with a lot of characters actually making the same uh, return, you know, Tyrion, the Dragon Children, Teclas, they're all alive during that period. It would be using the exact same model. And this would be a way for them to implement in Koresh, Nippon, and all the others, which, I mean, wouldn't be a bad thing, but I don't see this as a good thing overall because, you know, like, I've paid, what, 60 euros for a game, because uh, obviously I pay in euros, so that's 180, and then adding in another 60 to 240, not including all the DLCs, um... You kind of see what I mean here, it just sounds very odd. There's also been some, like, whispers that it just might be a separate game mode for Warhammer 3, uh, which might just be expensive. 
Either way, I don't know, it just sounds odd. Look, I wouldn't mind a game mode, but it can't be just like characters, right? It can't be just characters with all the units. It needs to be a bunch of units and it would need to be justifiable for the price, which would mean, um, you know, in Kuresh and Nippon at launch for whatever this is. Obviously, this could just be whispers, but again, it's very important to talk about these whispers because, I mean, we, we've been screwed over before, guys. Let's be honest here. Yeah, you know, shadows have changed and stuff. Whether or not this has been canned or not, I don't know. This would mean if this did actually happen, it would have to run alongside, uh, you know, Total War 40k. Creative Assembly can't actually, despite having multiple teams and multiple studios, they can't support many titles as well. This is why Free Kingdoms suffered a lot and obviously Troy and so on. I don't know. I'm a fantasy fan over 40k. I would prefer this, but... It would have to be done right, and if they can support it with multiple teams, I mean, that would work. You now have a bunch of developers who, um, you know, are going to need to be moved rather than be fired. We'll have to wait and see. And the last one is really just an open theory. There could be more games that we just never heard about. Keep in mind that Creative Assembly have been trying to branch out for a while now. It's not just because of Hyenas. They've done it with Alien Isolation, Halo Wars, Remember Total War, Elysium, basically that Hearthstone clone. Um, it's just something that Creative Assembly are trying to do, and maybe it's just for <laughs> tax benefits. Uh, I know that sounds bad to say, but a lot of companies do release things which are meant to fail just so they can get a tax break. So, you know, every now and then I joke about a whole Total War dating simulator, but I have a feeling that maybe at one point it's crossed their mind. Hell, I remember once some guy saying a rumor about an MMO, but I very, very much doubt that. The MMO series stuff is dead, you know, that genre isn't really doing too well lately. Uh, I don't think that they would sink that type of money there. There's also that uh, thing about a super game that Sega wanted to do, which I honestly still believe it was Hyenas, but it could have been something else, and it could have been linked up to Creative Assembly. But time will tell. Hopefully Sega shuts the hell up and stops making bad financial decisions. I mean, at this point, they should have just released Hyenas. This is just my personal opinion. It was almost done. They had done a beta and everything. But yeah, what do you guys think about this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. I know this is a bit of a stretch video, uh, but the idea is I wanted to talk about this because I've been hearing these whispers for a while. I never talk about them. I do talk about the 40k one because obviously it's, I'm a Warhammer channel mostly, but I feel like it's important now, especially after everything. Most of these titles are probably dead now, so yeah. <laughs> We might as well talk about it, right? Yeah, see you guys soon. <laughs>